concern. All right, let's bring in David Manson. He's CIO of the Manson Group, a wealth management firm based out of Newport Beach, California, to talk us through what his permutations are for the upcoming elections. David, is there a specific, I don't know, political permutation in your view that might help risk assets the best? Well, I think people have to divide it into two different silos. There's the sort of volatility play around the immediate election results or lack of results. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of people that have been going long vol. And I think that you're going to have some kind of unwinding of trades one way or the other in the days ahead. Now, that is a separate matter from where we end up once we know results. What does the Senate look like? What does the presidential race look like? And then, of course, the margins that went along with both of those races. I think that's going to have a lot to do with what policy initiatives are able to get enforced or not enforced. So that then David takes us into the next question. Tell us this. What fundamentally changes under Biden and what may change under Trump 2.0? I think let's start with the second one. Under Trump 2.0, I think he's going to have very different personnel. I'm very close to some of the people in the economic team there. I don't think all of them are coming back. I think you're going to have a lot of new people. Therefore, potential for a new agenda to some degree, that's going to bring in some different uncertainty. As far as with President Biden, I really think the biggest question mark with the President Biden will be answered once he starts naming cabinet appointments. And that question is, is he going to have feel the Need to cater to the far left, or is he going to try to play it some more like a centrist, put on some perhaps more familiar neo Keynesian faces in his economics and commerce department? I don't know what to expect there, but I think that level of regulation in financials, energy, that, that's going to be a big factor that markets are going to want answers. Right. The regulatory uncertainty is certainly there, isn't it? In terms of the short term, should the markets, is there an argument that the markets should be focused on the Senate to some extent in the short term more than the presidency in terms of the potential impact? And is there an argument that if the GOP holds the Senate, stimulus remains unlikely and you could see a leg lower for equities? No, I definitely don't agree with that. You're getting stimulus no matter what. But I totally agree with the first statement, which is that the Senate is a more market sensitive reality than the presidential outcome. Whether you get Biden or Trump, you're going to get a big fiscal stimulus package. The, really, I think the question becomes, and you can argue there's pros and cons around each side of that. With Biden, you might get more regulatory pressure, but with Trump, you're going to get the ongoing Trumpian uncertainties that his presidency has represented. The biggest outcome that could benefit markets is if the Republicans hold the Senate, then you really don't have to care as much from an investing standpoint about the uh, White House outcome. I think at that point, some of the tail risk is off the table. Corporate taxes are not going to go higher. Capital gain taxes are not going to go higher if the Republicans hold the Senate. It's going to be very close. It's going to come down to two, maybe three races. But I agree that's the bigger market question mark going into Election Day. David, how would you look to adjust your portfolio in the event of a disputed result? We really believe that you can't do anything, that hedges are going to be way too expensive and they're going to end up being suckers trades. The VIX is so inverted right now. All the money is on the one month protection, far cheaper than three months of protection. There's just simply nothing you can do. I believe that you're going to have to bear with the uncertainty. There's absolutely no scenario by which it doesn't get resolved. It can take a couple of weeks. God forbid it takes even longer. I don't think it'll take that long, but markets are going to have to kind of fiddle through it a little bit. Investors will do the same. Do you think averaging in might be just the simple way to go, David? I mean, is there a logical case to be made that no matter the outcome, because there will be stimulus coming, that stocks go up no matter what? Yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure that the market is sitting around waiting for that stimulus. I certainly believe that, especially if it's a well-targeted and thoughtful stimulus, it will help the overall economy. But remember, the market started to basically understand that no stimulus was coming in July, and the market went up 3,500 points. 
when no stimulus was forthcoming. The reality is that markets will go higher because the economy is going to recover, a vaccine is going to come, these lockdowns are going to end, and whether that's in Q4, Q1, we know that there's this path ahead for resumption of economic activity and that the industrial production and manufacturing side of the economy, business investment, is going to be picking up as well. But I think that right now in the short term, it's just impossible to totally speculate. And and frankly, what we saw last week was a lot of that defensiveness already kind of came on. But the yield curve steepened. The 10-year yield did not all of a sudden fall 15 basis points, 25 basis points. The, the yield curve is telling you this is a transitory event with equity volatility. Let's get out a couple of weeks and get back to normal. David Banson, great to get your insights.